Hi, good morning everybody. As you can see, it's a snowy day <laughs> in my backyard. I uh, had some time over the last few days to watch the squirrels trying to jump through the, the snow. It was uh, quite entertaining, I might tell you. So anyways, today's topic, welcome, happy Monday. Today's topic is about toxic relationships. And uh, I work with, I've been working with a lot of women over the last 10 to 12 years. And uh, many of them come because part of why they're sick, part of why they don't feel well, is because they're in relationships that are just soul sucking. So whether they're at work or whether they're at home, whether they're with a mother or a father, um, whether it's a coworker or a boss or a friend, most of us have relationships, hey Beth, especially if we're really caring people, if we're empaths or healers, or if we um, have the ability to stay very grounded and strong in the most chaotic situations. Um, those are the women kind of on the two sides, the super intelligent and the super empathic. And they can be the same, of course, in different, because uh, we all have way different ways of being intelligent in the world. And to a T, the main reason that these women stay in these in very toxic relationships isn't because they don't love themselves. It isn't because they're broken. It isn't because there's some deep, dark childhood trauma, although there's plenty of those running around for a lot of women. The main reason they stay is because they're exhausted. Hey, Terry, nice to see you. These women have been in toxic relationships since they were kids because let's say it was their mother or father or brother or sister or maybe they got older and they were able to tolerate that and navigate it and it wasn't too bad and they could cope but then they ended up at a job and then they ended up marrying somebody and then their child ended up being that way so how does this happen you know it happens for a lot of women when they start to get uh, in their 40s 50s and 60s is we no longer have the same resiliency that we used to have. Hi, Jody. nice to see you. We don't have the flexibility and resiliency to handle, you know, the rocks that are thrown or the temper tantrums or the, um, you know, all the things coming at us. Our bodies are starting to wear down when we get to that age. And suddenly all the skills that we used, you know, working out or, you know, running or uh, food or whatever it may be, it's finally accumulated to the point where we are just too exhausted to make a change. Now that doesn't mean that life can't change. I mean, in fact, for many women, when they find me, as I said, in their 40s and 50s and 60s, they are beaten down. They've got IBS, you've got fibro, you've got rheumatoid arthritis because you are so exhausted. Hey, Ann, nice to see you. So worn down. And they come to me with stories of, um, I must just, I just must not love myself enough. Or maybe I'm not, you know, maybe my uh, root chakra is stuck. Can you open that up? And in reality, we stay in these situations because we are so tired to make a change. But when you do start to do things which are in your best interests, which help nourish you, when you start to make those small positive changes to get your needs met, your strength grows. You get your clarity back. You can think clearer. You don't react as often. You develop other coping skills. For me, a big turning point was when I decided I needed the company of women because I did not have that support because I was so tired that I hadn't gathered a community around me of women. And when I started to get those friends and those relationships, that helped feed me. That helped nourish me. And what happens when we get our needs met? We find the strength and we find the courage and the resiliency and the problem solving and all that jazz in order to stand up. Suddenly it's not something we need to be as terrified of because we're not four-year-old children anymore. We are adult women. And the biggest change is we haven't recognized that we're adult women and that we can feed our souls. We can feed ourselves, whether it's mentally, physically, or emotionally. And the more you have coming in, 
the more nourishment on all those levels you have that's coming into your life that you've brought around you. Hey, Kelly, Ann, nice to see you. The more tools you bring together, the stronger you get. And that's what happens when women work with me for a while. You know, after we've worked together a couple months, suddenly they're able to leave the job that uh, was destroying them. They're able to find something that's a better fit. They're able to walk away physically or mentally or emotionally from their romantic relationship. They're able to set boundaries with their coworkers. You aren't broken. There's nothing wrong with you. What is, is that you are so tired and so worn out from coping for so long that you just don't have the energy to make the change. But trust me, when you start getting that nourishment again, when you start surrounding yourself with the things which make you, uh, your body heal itself, which gives you the problem solving ability to see your way through any, dif any difficult situation, when that happens, when the, when the bully comes into your office, you're able to say, hi, have you, met my <laughs> have you met my pepper spray? I keep it on my desk, so don't mess with me. You're able to start making small changes. You're able to start to walk away from people who are trying to control you. Because when we're exhausted, we don't have the ability to stand up or to walk out. Instead, we're so tired and so beaten down that we just let the cycle continue. And then we wonder what's wrong with us when we're anxious and depressed. But in reality, there is nothing wrong with you. You are amazing. You are a miracle and you can do this. You just need a little bit more. One of my favorite phrases from a mentor of mine was give from the overflow. I've heard it another way lately too. It's um, give from the saucer, not from the cup. So when you have so much love coming in, you can't help but change how you think. You can't help but be vibrant and make an impact on people. Hey, Deb, nice to see you. When you have enough coming in on all those mentally, emotionally, physically, socially, when you have so many resources filling your soul, you have the ability you have the wherewithal and the knowledge to do the things which create healthy relationships. Because healthy relationships don't just fall out of the sky. They really don't. Because most of us ended up growing up in some difficulty. Times have changed. We value different things now. We value happiness more than we ever have. So most of us weren't taught how to create great relationships, how to impact and influence the people that we love so that we all grow. And many of those things are counterintuitive. You know, we think we're supposed to give more and more and more. But what happens is we get so depleted, so tired, until we have nothing left to give. One of my favorite points to make is you have to care for yourself first. And when you've got enough coming in, then you're able to care about the other people around you then you're able to help them from a higher level, from a meta level, not from a level of, of doing the best that you can and losing your cool because you're so overwhelmed or faking it because you're too tired to get out of bed or you just can't face it anymore. Suddenly, when you've got the support behind you of women, of men, of nutrition, of movement, of water, of love, of meditation, when you have all those things coming in, when you change and you become this great, brilliant light, the people around you change too. Because now you're not enabling their bad behavior. You're teaching them how to be good human beings. You're teaching them how to treat each other with respect and love so that they can have good relationships in their life, so that they don't have to struggle either. I've seen a lot of things about narcissists lately. That's kind of been a focus of mine. So I subscribe to a lot of groups. Hey, Carrie, nice to see you. I subscribe to a lot of groups and I keep getting these things coming across my feed. And it's all about how narcissists are evil people that, you know, they're completely uh, worthless and not worth anybody's time. And you just need to cut them off and cut them out and walk away. 
you know, that's all great when we sit there and we're able to say, you are the reason that I am XYZ, that I'm sick, that I have IBS. It's your fault. If you weren't a narcissist, if you weren't this or that or the other thing, hey, Nikki, then uh, I would be happy. But in reality, what happens is you need to nourish yourself. Nourish yourself first. And when you nourish yourself, you start to be able to stand up to those bullies. You start to be able to say enough. You start to come up with uh, solutions that uh, give you the ability to be resilient and to find a new job and to, and to be supportive and be present for the people in your life. Hey, Brenda. And when you do that, I had another mentor who would also say, she would say, you don't need to leave anybody. Be yourself and the people who can accept that, they will leave your life. You don't have to kick them out, they will leave. And this is what happens in toxic relationships. When you become so happy, so fulfilled, so balanced, so healthy, you've got so much nourishment coming in. It is exhausting, Jody. It's extremely exhausting. But when you have all of that coming in for you, you're able to be that highest version of yourself. You're able to say to the people, this is unacceptable. And if you want to have a relationship with me, these are the expectations. You're able to make that change. And then for the people who are ready, that that's where they're at in their journey, they will start to step up because they won't want to lose that hope and that light, that promise. We become narcissistic because we're in survival because we are exhausted. And so in all of us is that survival mechanism. And we've seen it when we've become angry and we've lost our cool when we haven't wanted to, when it hasn't been on our turf, when we've let ourselves be victimized, you've seen it. But when we start to come into that strength, when we start to make smart choices, even if they're tiny, of healing our digestive system, of getting our heart figured out, of getting our thyroid sorted out, of figuring out the adrenal fatigue and the dizziness and the exhaustion. When you work on those pieces, now you have the ability to see past the behavior because the behavior is that survival that they have. You see past it to the person within and you give an invitation and you say, I invite you to have a relationship with this version of me, the version of me that isn't isn't uh, broken, the version of me that has the ability to hold you to a higher version of you, to challenge you, and to be the hope and the light that you can turn this around. Because when you get exhausted enough, you become just like that narcissist. Hey Peggy, nice to see you. You become just like that self-absorbed person. Why? Because you are so sick and you feel so tired and so worn down that you have no choice and now you're the one in survival mode. Over all my years of doing healing work, and I started with my, <laughs> I've been doing this my entire life, of all the things that I've learned in healing work, it's that um, when you change, when you get what you need, the people around you start to change too. And when you are in pain, and when you are exhausted, we all have the ability to be narcissistic. We all have the ability to be toxic because we just have nothing left to give. So, okay? So if you're feeling exhausted and worn out, the answer isn't to uh, run away screaming, unless it's temporary. The answer is to start to get your needs met, whether it's hanging out with these live streams, finding great magazines like Natural Awakenings that Peggy publishes, Maybe it's finding uh, great healers who have their head on straight, who stop saying it's the toxic person's fault and who start saying they're in a survival mode and we don't know where they're at in their journey. And it doesn't mean they give them a pass. And it doesn't mean that you, um, you know, that you allow yourself to be bullied. But what it does mean is that you hold out the hope and the role modeling for them that they can turn their life around too. You have the ability to do that. It has to start with us because nobody else is doing it, okay? So cool, here's your homework assignment for the day. I want you to find one thing that makes you feel good, that nourishes you in a healthy way, 
Not the Cheetos unless your emotions need it. <laughs> or the chocolate. Well, chocolate's good too. But something that makes you feel like you're finally getting that warm soup in your belly. You know, you're finally getting the thing that you need. And for me, it can be staring out my window watching the squirrels. And when you have enough coming in, when you have enough resources and enough love and enough nourishment coming into your life, that's when you can be the role model that you always wanted to be. And you will be amazed at the way that people change when you teach them and you role model for them how to live a better way. And a lot of those toxic people, they become the people that you loved from the very beginning. It takes a little time, but it's worth it. So I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you for joining me. I'm so looking forward to seeing you tomorrow and take some time to watch some squirrels today, okay? Hey, Carrie, nice to see you. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.